Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, peace be upon everyone. Thank you for watching. This is uh, Consider This TV, where truth is made clear from falsehood. My name is Kenny Balmer, and Brother Ijaz with me. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ijaz. How are you? Wa alaikum as -salam, Brother Kenny, looking good as always. Yeah. I, I can see that we're dressed as opposites. You in white, I'm in black today. <laughs> well, you, well, you know what they say, that the good guy always wears wears white. So uh, uh, Okay, I, I see that, yes. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Brother, welcome, Brother Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Yeah, alhamdulillah, doing fine, brother. Doing just brother fine. Brother, be joining us as well. Okay, okay, inshallah. So before we go any further, I do want to say I do bear witness. There's no God other than Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his final servant and the seal of all prophets. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin. Uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have another reasons to revert story uh, segment, rather. 
with a sister from here in Texas, in Austin, Texas. And uh, let me remove this banner here just briefly. Uh, uh, sister Ariella Noor. And once again, she lives in Austin, Texas, and she is a, a revert to Islam. And uh, she, she'll come on tomorrow, inshallah, to tell her story. Uh, I can't remember right now. I need I need to verify with her again whether uh, about the time. I can't remember right now if it was at 3 p.m. or 6 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so I will have to, to check that out. But be on the lookout for that. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share. And I want to welcome also Brother Faisal to the show. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Doing fine, brother. Doing just fine. Okay, so um, I, I contacted George earlier, and he may be on to uh, to engage in this post-debate uh, discussion as well. So he said he, he is working on some other things right now, so we'll see what happens. But he said he will try to try to at least come in when he can. But uh, uh, so, yeah, so where do we begin? I think the, I think the debate went went well. Um, yep. You know, uh, I enjoyed the discussion and. Um, Alhamdulillah. So I'll let you brothers speak. I was the one debating, so I'll let you guys talk. And, and, uh... So, yeah, uh, uh, I, I watched the entire debate. I was here for the Q&A session as well. Mustafa and his friends were there for the Q&A session as well. Um, uh, I found the debate to be, I love the topic, obviously. It's one of my favorite topics of all time. I'm glad to see that the interaction between uh, both debaters was professional and it was satisfactory and uh, it was very congenial. There was a good attitude you know, regarding it. Uh, I think all of us enjoyed the entire discussion. Uh, none of us uh, think that, uh, honestly, honest to God, it was a pleasure to watch and see. And I'm actually happy to see you, Brother Kenny, uh, progress in terms of like your debates, uh, preparations, and your performance, etc. It is really beautiful to see the that, and knowledge that you've uh, gained over the last few years that I've known you. Alhamdulillah. You know, debating is a, uh, as I mentioned uh, after the show last night, it's an art form, and it uh, mm -hmm. takes a lot of preparation and you know, in the midst of the debate, there's a lot of points being brought up. So you got to keep a, keep track of the points that um, you want to address. And you know, it's it's a lot it's a lot more to it than people people realize. <laughs> yeah. And so it comes. You get better with practice. It was a, literally my own. It was only my uh, fifth or maybe sixth actual moderated debate. We've had plenty of discussions via the show, of course, and that's debating within itself. But it, but it's di it's different when it's moderated. It's a totally different. Uh, ball game and it is. Uh, so it's, it takes a lot of a lot of uh, preparation and so forth and so uh, so but brother Kenny I think it's you in the uh, debate yesterday I saw you with like sheets of paper and I saw that you were prepared and you had quotations ready to go uh, let me bring brother Faz and Mustafa in here I know that these are two brothers you love very very much uh, brother Faz and brother Mustafa what are your thoughts on the, the, the debate yesterday yeah, I thought, thought mashallah, it went very well. Alhamdulillah, it was uh, very well uh, mannered. It was a, it was a good dialogue. There wasn't any animosity between each other. Mm -hmm. Well respected, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, it was good and it was very informative. But also, as well, uh, we we're looking at it from <clears throat> the Christian understanding and also from the Islamic understanding. Um, but Obviously, I mean, we have our views in regards to the to the reliability of the uh, of the Bible, um, but uh, like I said, but the whole debate itself was 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 well mannered and well moderated by uh, by Brother Mustafa as well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I think he did a good job as a first time moderator. It was. Um pretty interesting to say that uh yeah i think he did a good job moderating alhamdulillah brother kenny uh actually we haven't heard from brother mustafa's yet uh brother mustafa jazakallah khair now um subhanallah kenny's done a great job i mean i, I i'm always learning anyway and uh, brother kenny especially when kenny already uh, he prepared himself what uh brother george was um his during his first uh, opening statement Kenny already had this prepared anyway. I think it was already prepared, and it's very predictable anyway what he was going to say. So he was all prepared. And again, Brother Kenny does a great job, like Brother Ijaz. You know, I, I have a lot of love and trust for my brothers, and um, our brothers are always faithful to each other, subhanAllah, in sense of how we work together. So, Kenny, subhanAllah, jazakallah khair. 
Yeah, alhamdulillah. You know, all we can do is try to do our best. And, uh, you know, all, surely all, all goodness comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he gets all, all the praise for all of it. So all we're doing is trying to do our best and trying to share the truth and the beauty of Islam. And so sometimes, yeah, obviously, we're, we're, we were discussing the Bible. And so I tried to make sure in the opening statement at the beginning that I let Christians know and anyone who's listening for that matter know that it's it's this is not an for one he brought up it, he wanted to debate that topic he actually challenged me on that topic oh, i didn't and expect that yeah I didn't, yeah so when he when he asked me i was like well, absolutely i how can i turn that down so um but but the, the point being is that um you know we're not a, he keeps n nothing gets george he's not here to defend himself but even today in the chat he was saying that that muslims like to attack christianity and my response was, I said, well, George, this thing goes both ways. And it's not that Muslims are attacking Christianity. Maybe sometimes people cross lines in what they do and what they say. Uh, people are people. But it goes both ways. And I told him I've, I've written a 15-page, uh, excuse me, a 15-chapter book addressing the point uh, from, the, from the Islamophobic standpoint, the, all the propaganda used against Islam. So, but... But I tried to make sure at the beginning of the, the discussion, and I want to make sure now that, uh, you know, uh, let it be known that it's not an attack on, on uh, um, you know, Christians and what they believe and so forth. That's not it. It's an attack against falsehood. And, and I say that with the utmost respect, um, you know, but, but I, think, I think through the course of the debate, inshallah, I, I think I proved my case if we were in a court of law, proving that, that we can't trust the reliability of the Bible because we don't know which Bible we're talking about. There's, mm -hmm. mul there's literally multiple versions. But on top of the multiple versions, there's issues within the text itself. Um, you know, um, and, and so it's... Uh, it's and you were very calm as well, Kenny. That's the main thing. So you're you are not only having a discussion or a dialogue, you are also giving dawah as well, meaning with your the characteristic. So you weren't shouting, you weren't, you know, you weren't screaming and shouting yeah. and all over the place. You were calm. You were yeah, calm. Yeah. You were doing, and I think that itself is another example of you're, you're having a dialogue and you're giving dawah with your characteristic, the way you are. Yeah, and that, that brother, plays that's a big role as well. I yeah, think that, that plays a big role. Imagine you're giving dawah to someone and you're screaming and shouting, no, bah, 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 like that. It wouldn't mm -hmm. work. Yeah, that's well, that's, that's something that I literally, literally every single prayer, I, I, pray, I ask Allah to increase me in patience, you know, knowledge, patience, and wisdom, and to help me use those things properly. Uh, it's one thing to have knowledge and have wisdom, but but you don't utilize it, you know, and so forth. And have and you have the capacity to be patient. You know that you should be patient, but you don't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's literally something that I pray about every single prayer, you know, and. Um, uh, I take it. Oh I take God. it serious, and, so, and sometimes I get out of you know I get out of character. We make mistakes. We're human beings. Sometimes I get a little more feisty than I need to, but it's all it's all in defense of the truth against falsehood. And so, of course, the Christians on the Christian side, they're going to say that we are the ones in falsehood. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so okay, well, we will look at the evidence. We put the evidence on on the scales, and I think once again, I believe that if we were in a court of law. Um, I think I would have uh, proven my, my case. Uh, yeah, yeah, brother, can you just heads up? I think someone's backstage. Oh, okay, but, but generally speaking, just generally speaking, brother, Kenny, it, it's important to understand that we must work as a team here, right? Uh, especially when it comes to debates. It sometimes feels like uh, the debate is the only one going up, if you know what I mean. But it's a team effort in that all Muslims are responsible for educating each other and helping each other, especially as it pertains to uh, debating strategies, gathering of information, verifying it, etc. So I was happy to see that some of the Christians that did turn up in the comments as well, they recognized this and they were fact checking the uh, Christian debater as well. So it was not as if, you know, uh, uh, there were only Muslims there, there were Muslims and Christians who were very interested in the points being made. And I was happy to see Christians expressing, you know, questions about the veracity of the data being shared by the Christian brother. As you would remember, Brother Kenny, you know, subhanAllah, um, I, I did a little bit of fact checking and uh, um, the Christians in the audience were agreeing with me. They, 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 
Uh, we saw a few comments from, I think, Luke and uh, from Jonathan at one point uh, pointing out that the Christian debater had made some unreliable claims. Now, obviously, he's not yet to defend himself, but part of a debate review is that we critique what we can critique and we praise what we can praise. So I praise you well, guys for the matters that you had. That was brilliant. That was really on point. Well, in, that in regards to the points that were brought up, for one, I don't think I spoke about any of those points as we mentioned, <laughs> uh, other than the Council of Nicaea. So well, I, I did want <laughs> your thoughts on but this I, correction. But I, I mean, did, I, I, yeah, but I did talk to, I did talk to uh, George about this today via text, and he, and he did say that... Uh, uh, the points that you that you brought up that he wouldn't dispute those points. Uh, matter of fact, he oh, may he may oh. wind up joining the panel, but he's but he he agreed that the points were legitimate points. That is uh, something interesting know. from him as well. Yeah. I'm shocked. Yeah. Sure, I'm I'm shocked. Well, of course, there were legitimate points. He just said, uh, but the, the point is, subhanallah. Yeah, you're very happy today as well, mashallah. I don't see you smiling and with a happy face. Well, so that's really well, nice when I'm a brother whom I trust and love, you know, it's important that this yeah. fraternity, this this attribute of brotherhood, is we essential. have all love and trust with our brothers. And sincerely, I love you, and brother Kenny, and brother Mukit, and Faiz, and everybody. So yeah, alhamdulillah. Brother Kenny, did you change your background again? Uh. Because yeah. it's a flat background yes. this time. Previously, yes. it's like a curtain. I gotta be. No, it's no, it's so it's yeah. It's like, it's so, like you're sitting in the Pope's chamber or something with a curtain behind you. So <laughs> confession. Then I'll see. Okay, so look, I had a green screen, right? It's still a green screen, but if the lighting is not perfect, it. I'll show you what it does. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll show you what it does. So now I've changed it to a to, instead of the green. Oh, you can change it to a blue screen or a green screen, but depending on which one, you have to have a blue a blue background or a green background. And uh, but the, but the lighting has to be perfect. And I, I've got so I've got some big windows that are up there, and there's nothing. There's two. They're too high. I can't do anything about them. Do you think I have a palace or something? Can you? Were you in some palace? Huh? Does it look can like you a palace? I couldn't hear you. Brother Kenny, to the back of me, is it agree? Oh, oh, Kenny, you yeah, see, see what it does? The tunnel snap on the yes. okay. if, if, the, if, if, the, if the lighting is not exactly perfect, it won't it, it won't work. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, you look very pixelated. Kenny, yeah, do you, you look think like I have... Uh, Tron. I'm out of there. That's better. Yeah. So anyway, so I've just actually turned it off. So yes, yeah, just got the screen back there behind me. But it but it kind of blends in. You can't. I, I can't tell what it looks like other than. It look looks at it. really good. I'm gonna be honest. It looks like completely black, like what I have in the back of me. But mine's is actually a physical background, like physical. Yeah. I, yeah. I like you know, physical things, to be honest. As most of would know. So the the point is the the <laughs> point is, <laughs> uh, uh, Kenny. Um, I will. I, I very much enjoyed the conversation, and we don't often see very congenial conversations when it comes to faith differences, right? Especially when you are having to speak on another person's book, if you know what I mean. Yeah. The, the point is, my brother can. <laughs> Salam alaikum, brother. Um, is that Rumsey? I can't yeah, really Rumsey. see. Rumsey. Assalamu brother Rumsey. Yeah, I got to be honest. Oh, no, sorry, Rumsey. my chair. Yeah. Is this no, angle look better? It's because of the banner, brother. That's that's why I can't see your name. But um, oh. yeah, that's brother Rumsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I think sure. I've seen him on a few uh, YouTube panels lately. Uh, I'm not sure like, what he's up to. Totally but, not. Not an hour ago, maybe. <laughs> what, know what you're talking about? I plead the nope. fifth. Uh, no, no, no memories. Okay, never mind. Okay. But brother Kenny, speaking more to the debate, right? Uh, uh, one, I think the moderation in the chat was really on point. You had Brother Mukit there, I believe, and Brother MI5 Donia. They did a fantastic job. Um, the quality of the debate, I think, was of a very good standard, and it was approachable. You didn't get into too many technicalities, but the benefit of that is you have a wider audience that would be able to understand mm -hmm. the points being made. And th that is essential. You want to cast a wide net to bring the people to the true faith, right? And that's important. Um, and mm -hmm. as I was... Sorry, go ahead, Brother King. Please. Well, I had, you know, my, my intention, once again, with, with the debate was to actually pull him out of the text itself, out of the verses of the Bible, because I knew that that's, that's where he was going to go with it, and to, to pull him into dealing with the multiple versions, uh, in, in, because that's, that's the root of the problem. we got to know what book are we talking about and why, 
why do these different versions have these extra books? Some are missing books, some have more books. And so, so therefore it can't be, which one do you say is reliable? You know, and I try to make the point about the, obviously the, the, the Catholic Bible and the Protestant Bible. And there's no way that anyone can say that these are not competing with one another for, for status because, you know, uh, it's, it's the truth. Which which one do you go with? If you if you if you come into this situation and you have no knowledge of Christianity whatsoever, you've no no religion whatsoever, and someone tells you, "Here's the Bible," and they happen to hand you a Protestant version, when and then the next day someone comes and says, "You know, let me talk talk to you about um, you know the Bible," and they bring you a, a, a Catholic version. It's got seventy three books. What are you going to do? It, mm -hmm. Which one do you trust? So that's the that's the point. How can you how can you say either one is reliable when they when they're when they're competing with one another? And that's I must say though, brother Kenny, that um, George, I, I was a bit baffled when George said that was it the Council of Nicaea that the sixty six books were canonized, and it wasn't yeah. six books. Well, he said Council of Nicaea. Yeah, he did say and Nicaea. It wasn't the Council of Nicaea, we know that, but he said um, originally Council of Nicaea, bam, bam, 66 books. And I'm like, wait a second, 66 books? It wasn't the Council of Nicaea. No, Definitely yeah, that's what it was. It was another council. Not the, it was the 73 books that was. Yeah, 73. they weren't talking about that in the Council of Nicaea. And, exactly. I, and that's so why initially, I was trying, when he, when he brought that up, I think I addressed it in the in the uh, the first the, uh, first rebuttal, if I remember correctly, it might have been the second rebuttal. I don't second remember. One, second one. Second one. Okay. And when, when he brought it up, I had something else that he said on my mind, and so I did. I I I, I, I didn't even really focus on that initially. Then and then, I, but I did tell him. I said, you know what? You you said it was. They decided on sixty six books. I'd like for you to pro produce your evidence for that. And then I moved away from it because I'm I've got another point that I'm trying to to, to address. And um, it's difficult for one person to like uh, people don't understand this, but you got to keep track of the status of each argument that your opponent makes. You have to keep track of what references they may or may not mention. You got to keep track of what arguments they could bring up in response to yours. So it's overwhelming, you know. So yeah. So, so these are, these are points that things that he brought up in his in his opening okay. and this is this is what he brought up in in his uh rebuttal right so that's so th these are literally each line is a bunch of different things that he brought up that i want to you know some are more important than others so i'm writing down certain things because i don't know where he's going to go with it and so you want to you know if you look on this paper you'll see that i put stars by certain points that i want to make sure i address these things a matter of fact, I didn't get to all of them just because of time. You can't, you know, that's just how, how it goes. With but, but I just want to tell you that, Brother Kenny, is that when you said 66 book, I was a bit baffled. And was he not aware that the Reformation took place 15, mid 15th century and so and so? Uh, Protestants, they broke out and so and so. I mean, and then about Josephus and Tacitus. I had a discussion with Brother um, Ijaz. Um, Mukit and Faisal regarding this. We were just having a chat yesterday. And Let me just interrupt you just quickly. Uh, hmm? George is backstage right now. Let me bring okay, him on yeah. and we'll continue. Welcome to the panel, George. Um, How are you? Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, my Bajan friend. How are you? <laughs> so I've been listening to you guys via Facebook. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, with all due respect to our intelligent people, but what why I had to come in, having watched it on Facebook, having watching you guys on Facebook, is that basically you're in an echo chamber. You're all Muslim, I assume you're all Sunni Muslim, and you're just reinforcing your own views. And I was listening to see if any of you were willing to bring up the key points that I had made, and none of you have done that. So based on anyone who didn't listen to the debate yesterday, with all due respect, I'm being very respectful, with anyone listen, who didn't see the debate yesterday would feel that, oh, the Muslims said all the right things. The Christians said no points that are valid and Christianity must therefore be false. That's what anyone who didn't see the debate yesterday would be saying. 
because but, there were some very important points that were made yesterday. But George, and there are other important points we could have That's about psychotherapy. Just to be okay. honest, George, I didn't feel like you made very powerful points. Otherwise, I would have raised them my, myself. As you know, I had many disagreements with what you said. If there was a particularly powerful point that you felt you made, uh, uh, please feel free to reiterate it. I mean, I'm not here to, to guide the ship. That's uh, Kenny's uh, job and Sister Katerina's job, of course, uh, Mustafa's job. Uh, but the point is, we want to... We want to be on the same page here. So, George, what was a point that you think uh, you raised which was not adequately addressed? Yeah. Just one point, if you could. There are several points, and there are more points that I could have made as well. Uh, but I think it's key to recognize that the Bible has a narrative. Kenny mm -hmm. says a while ago, I listened to him, he said, my strategy was to pull him out of the verses and into the idea of the different books. But he, what none of you recognize is that the point is that the, there is a theme. The Bible has a theme. And every Bible has that theme. That theme is the focus is Jesus Christ. Now, also, you know, and we can go into this a little bit more as the discussion continues but gentlemen just be objective for a minute i know you're muslims and you're all bright guys you're, you're just jump eager to jump in and say something but give me a couple of minutes because you're all muslims and you'll all have a chance to to say something understand that the bible has a theme what's the theme of the bible the bible especially the new testament is saying look the jews were under roman occupation a guy comes up by the name of john saying uh prepare the way of the lord and he's baptizing people and everybody is in fear of this guy paying attention to this guy then jesus comes and gets baptized by this guy who was baptizing people that's all he was doing but dipping them in the water and baptizing them jesus comes and get, gets baptized then jesus had a ministry that lasts three and a half years then jesus is crucified then according to the Christians, this is the narrative, I'm just giving you the Christian narrative. Then he, 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 he rose from the dead on the third day. Uh, 50 days later, there is something called Pentecost, which is a Jewish celebration that has been established for hundreds and thousands of years. The Holy Spirit is poured out. Pentecost, wait, oh, did he say Pentecost is a Jewish celebration? Yes. For hundreds of thousands, oh, for hundreds of, years. And thousands of, hundreds, of years. Hundreds of years. So, what happens okay, then? That would be good evidence. I'd like to see some good strong evidence for that. I'm, I'm enjoying this. So, so then what happens is that there's an explosion of, uh, this is according to the book of Acts especially, there is an explosion of Christianity from Jerusalem. Where what? The explosion of Christianity from Jerusalem. No. where there is a lot of new members being added to the church at a rapid pace. George, what does this have to do with the reliability of the Bible? Oh, hold, hold Thank on. you, Kenny. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. And well, then, it, it's, this is the point, George. We, we, were then, debating, then, we were debating the reliability of the Bible, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but... I have one last point. And okay. then there is, it's followed by Jewish persecution and Roman persecution. So that's the narrative. That's the narrative. That's the bare bones of what every Bible is saying. Now, hold on. Let me finish. Every so, Bible. Oh, every oh, Bible. Oh. That's wrong. So, 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 so we have that bare skeleton. The question then becomes, okay, the first thing to notice is that it has a narrative. It, 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 there is a narrative. The second thing is that History bears these things out. We have contemporary historical documents saying, look, there's this, this religion coming up called Christianity, and we need to quash it. The Germans, the, the Romans were specifically persecuting the Christians, trying to force this religion down. George, what does this have to do with the reliability of the Bible? That the point I'm making to you, listen to what I'm saying. I'm okay. saying that the Bible has a narrative and we these specific points and these specific points can be verified in okay. history. 
That's a matter of history, George. George, you, you're, you're going off the topic, like Brother Kenny said. George, you're not proving the, your point. You're saying a narrative, that's fine. We know what your Bible says. You don't have to preach it to us. But the point is that you haven't proven the authenticity or reliability of the Bible just by saying, historically, we know that Christians were persecuted. That's not any evidence so, that the Bible is the authentic word of God. That's history. Any so, history can talk to you about stuff. Let me just, George, let me just respond to something. I haven't finished my point. The thing is, the thing is, liars do not make very good martyrs. What is liars that? Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. The point is, these people who are being killed, they were being killed oh, for a reason. What historical day do you have they were martyred? Who are your history? Okay, let's go and look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Okay, so Kenny, we'll find out who the history is. One but, second. But, but this, this is a, this is red herring stuff. This, this completely. Is, yeah, it's completely off the topic here. Yeah, we will get even worse for him. Watch. Well, yeah. I, I just want to say two things really quickly, right? There is a brilliant book by uh, Sean McDowell, who is the son of J uh, uh, Joshua. What, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua had the wrong J in mind. Joshua McDowell, where he looks at the martyrologies or the stories of at least the disciples which survived. And in the end, he concludes, because uh, uh, he did a PhD thesis on this work, um, of all the historical data that he's gone through, he has concluded that most of the narratives about the persecution of the uh, of the eleven disciples, which remained, um, is not only unreliable, but they are at a much later date, and they seem to be developed. Secondly, yeah. there is a wonderful work by Dr. Candida Moss of the University of Birmingham. It's called The Myth of Persecution, where she's gone through the relevant historical data from the period of Greco-Roman antiquity, and she's realized, or at least the data demonstrates, that there was actually no periods of persecution. I think uh, in psychology, there is something known as a persecution complex. And so people always victimize themselves. And so what we find in early Christian history, there are a lot of martyrologies, but the evidence does not demonstrate it. So I'll give an, an easy example here. George made the claim that Christ was crucified and that there was contemporary evidence for it. I think I'm going to be honest here, George, you don't understand what the word contemporary means <laughs> because it means at the same time. So what document did you claim was contemporary to Jesus claiming that he was crucified? I'm curious because now it's the time for evidence. As the Bible says, the sorry, as uh, Josh McDowell says, the evidence demands a verdict and you have not provided evidence, therefore the verdict is against you. So if you can please provide some evidence, I would appreciate it. Okay, all right. So so your your disdain and your dislike for me and the Christian viewpoint is obvious. Nothing you about are, that. Are, you are history hostile and, historical and you story. are condescending. George, that's not true. George. George, please I be patient. Leave the discussion. All right. George, I allow you guys to continue in your echo chamber. George, that's that's if you want to continue in your echo chamber, that's fine. George, please be patient. What, what it sounds like is that you're being offended. No, of course I'm offended by what you said. Hold on one second, George. Please bear with me. It sounds like you're being offended when you're when you're faced with with hard. I'm offended evidence. by his condescending attitude and his, okay. his, his, his illusion of knowledge. I don't think, I don't think it's, because I don't, they be, they believe themselves to be wise, but they were really foolish. Listen, all right, George. Listen, George. Just be patient. Just one second, okay? Because no no one's here trying to disrespect for you. Disrespect, disrespect you, brothers. Don't be disrespectful. Yeah, don't know the meaning of the word contempt. Listen, George. No, yeah, I don't think you're, anyone's been disrespectful saying, you at all. But let, hold, on, George, hold on, George, one second. Right. George, play, be patient, just one second. All I need is like 20 seconds, George, and I'll uh, play, please bear with me. But what it sounds like to me is that when you're faced with hard evidence, you take Whoa. You take, you're taking it personal as okay. though it's an attack. So what, what we're doing, we're just, we're just dialoguing. And so That's you, dialogue. George, hold on one second, man. So you, we ha, we are we're trying to dialogue, but you're interrupting me right now. Uh, but okay, so so you you have had the opportunity. You had two and a half hours yesterday to present your case. Okay, and 
you you yourself have said there's many points you could have brought up. There's many points that I could have brought up as well. But we presented our cases. Okay. So so what we're talking about now, he's already he he, he left. He left. Okay. Oh, he left. He stormed out. Yeah. Okay. So well, what? Are, so so yeah. what? what I don't know just to summarize it, brother, and brother Ijaz and um, brother Riz and uh, Faz. So um, myself and brother Ijaz, all we asked for was um, evidence. Yeah. So yeah. you said they were martyred. That's fine. We take your word for it. Provide us the evidence. We know there isn't no evidence to support this claim. So now you're frustrated. It's it's affecting you now. Hold on a second. I thought all this time it really did happen. What if it doesn't happen? That could affect me in my belief. This is the problem. We are not. We are not disrespecting you. We are only asking no. for evidence, just the way you ask us for evidence. So yeah, we, and he, and he, we didn't ask you to show us. Show us evidence that the uh, that the there was an earthquake and zombies came out. We never asked all of that. We could ask no. for that. That would have been worse but, if we asked him that. Yeah, we and, and, and the thing is, he's, record that. He's, he's, he record that. No. Yeah, and the thing is, he's, he's still deviating from the topic at hand. No, I mean we we know what's what the stories of the Bible that I mean that's but that's that's not what the topic was. We're talking about the reliability of those stories, okay? So we know we know what the Bible is saying, okay? Not that, uh, uh, um, matter of fact, some of the things that he thinks it's saying, it's not actually saying. But that's that's a debatable point. You bring bring your evidence, we bring ours. But the but the fact of the matter is, we're not talking about the stories within the Bible. We're talking about the reliability of the stories themselves, okay? So. Uh, I want to welcome to the panel, uh, Abdul, Brother uh, Abdul Mateen, Assalamu alaikum, and also MZ. I'm not who sh I'm not sure who MZ is, but uh, MZ, are you Christian or Muslim? Assalamu alaikum. This is Muneeb. I'm a Muslim. Okay. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the panel, brother. And See, brother Bati is there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, brother Ramzi. Go ahead. Okay. So essentially, oh, brother Ijaz, he forgot about me again. No, I brother Muhammad. That. I'm so sorry I didn't. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. brother, oh. brother Muhammad. Oh. I, I'm so used to seeing your face that I didn't think I didn't think about no, it. No, no. Wow. Wow. It's it's brother. You see, it's not just you, it's Bati as well. That's <laughs> just okay, guys. Guy. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm because sorry. we are identi identical twin up here. Yeah, that's, that's true. Why, oh, okay. you did not yeah. pick that. That is true. I partially joined the club when I got a haircut, but no, it's still. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You guys go ahead with the topic, please. I think uh, just to say something quickly, I asked him the question, do you know what contemporary means? Because you said there was a contemporary document at the time of Jesus testifying to these things. It's a simple question to ask you, what document is contemporary to Jesus? None. So it's a fair, straightforward question that we should be able to ask. Part of a review, mind you, is to review the information and claims made. And we have to be just uh, in doing so. And I've just realized that uh, Brother Kenny's shirt is the same color as the back of Brother Mustafa's room. Uh, you guys decided to match in colors today. So it's blue, blue, white. You know, I'm the only one standing out. It would seem because of my good looks. But the, the point is, I think... We fairly criticized what George had to say. You can't get it. Didn't I tell you guys, people who have a persecution complex look at themselves as being a victim, regardless of what you say. Yeah, so, I was going to bring that up because it literally directly after you said that, he started complaining that he was he was being picked on or whatever, however he put, termed it. So or or how the New Testament, the, the books of the Old Testament, they actually follow up, harmonize all the way down to the New Testament. The and I was going to ask you, say, okay, can I just ask you simply, how does the book of Judges follow up with the Gospels? In, in what ways? In what sense is it actually following up? How, how does it even follow up? What, what does the book of Judges state that it works in the favor of the Gospels? Nothing. Literally has nothing to do with it. Book of Judges, book of war, for crying out loud. So, you know, it just doesn't work in their favor. I mean, he, he's really nice with his words, the way he says it, very nice, you know, smooth. But again, for someone smooth like operator. Alhamdulillah, it's not going to work with us. Trust me, very well. They will just come to preach. Look, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, Acts, then Pentecostal, and thousands of years, and blah. And then what are, you're preaching, man. You don't have to give me a whole gospel story now. Hundreds you know, of thousands of years. Can I just add, can I just add something? He, he did say that a lot of... People died for their beliefs. Uh, even the disciples died for the for their beliefs. But the thing is, uh, when Jesus was alive, when the at the most critical point, they all forsook him and fled <laughs> when he really needed them. In Mark fourteen verse number fifty. So then, so when he's no longer there, why are you going to die for him then? When you could when you could have died for him and protected him when the time was needed. 
what is the point going then, uh, actually um, becoming a martyr later when you could have done it when your God was with you? Uh, that's exactly. the problem here. Subhanallah. So, yeah. yeah, but guys, you you were fear to George. We did we did give him time to speak. He wanted to mention that there was a narrative. Uh, he says that we were in an echo chamber, but we allowed you to come on. And by the way, he is invited to come back. Brother Kenny's not going to say no. We welcome opposing voices, but you have to be mature enough to listen to the critique that would be given. A review isn't all kisses, hugs, and roses. There are going to be negative points that will be brought forward. That's part of criticism. A person that cannot take criticism is perhaps not best for debating because they would react in ways which would be unprofessional. Uh, Brother Kenny, let me get your thoughts here. Do you feel as if evidence was provided that all the books of the Bible are consistent with each other, that they are reliable in its thoughts, in its presentation, in its ideas, because I didn't see that information presented. No, and that's and that's the topic that we were dealing with, and that's that's why uh, you know I expected him to go into the verses once again and, and go into the stories and go into the narratives, uh, but that's not what we're debating. Uh, so we're debating the reliability and how can you rely upon the the Protestant version when there's a set. Right next door, there's this, there's a uh, another Bible that has seventy three books. But wait a minute, there's no, that, that's not the that's not the end of it. There's other versions that have other numbers of books. Wait a minute, which which one is reliable? How you can't you, you you literally cannot say that any of them are reliable when they when there's multiple versions because naturally you go up and you say okay this this is the Bible and you've got seven different literal versions and they get different numbers of books which it's which one's reliable which which one see, see, kenny and, <laughs> kenny it's very very important that you do ask this question which bible are you using because one may mention some verses which may not be found in that particular bible well that's the point yeah absolutely so it's, it's like okay yeah. uh, it's I mean, this is just, this, this is, listen, this is just the basics. This is a, you know, if, if, if barely for the, dove for the layman, it. yeah, if, if, if like this scratching the surface, yeah. But well, the thing is, unfortunately, let, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be rude, but based on tradition, based, based on people's upbringing, some people literally, some Christians are not aware that there's a different number of books in the Bible. And let's be honest. I've been around a lot of Christians, and depending on what what their lifestyle is like, who they hang around, they maybe they've never been to a Catholic church. They've always been to Protestant churches, and vice versa. They have literally they don't know that they have different numbers of books. And once you come to that that real reality, then what? If you have it, if if you if you if you're seeking the truth, there's you know either you're seeking the truth, or you're just going with the flow. You're just going with uh, uh, you know, religious peer pressure, and you're just, you know, uh, brother Kenny. Okay. Brother yeah. Kenny, it's a yeah. very, very uh, sad story about Bibles yeah. that uh, they keep deducting and minusing, taking out stuff over the history for a long time. I cannot understand what kind of a God word that would be, where total seven books, just in the short, very closely, like uh, Protestant and uh, Catholics. Seven books are big number. Seven yeah. books are not seven. Seven yes. books are not seven words. Seven books are not seven sentences. Seven books. books maybe have thousands of words of God, and they are all gone. Yeah. And how can you trust that what they taken out and what they put it in? Which one is God's word? They confuse themselves so much, and it's so difficult to trust such type of books where there is no more trust left. Yeah. If you can say, oh, hang on, these words and these verses are supposed not to be there, these books are supposed not to be there, and thousands of thousands of years, people have been believing these words were the God's word. And now what happened? Where is the religion? Where is the faith? Where is the book? And who knows, seven or maybe there was 17 books supposed to be missing from there, and those 17 books maybe were the real stories. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's so mumbo jumbo. I'm not very scholarly. You guys three up there on the road, mashallah. You guys have a lot of knowledge about it. I'm just using common sense, and I'm 
getting confused every time I hear these stories. How people can keep following on that such kind of path? It's very difficult yeah. for people to uh, keep following on and such why, why kind is this of glowing. <laughs> oh, Who is glowing? It's true. It, it's true because you know, um, yesterday at the uh, questions and answer session, when I asked Kenny, when I gave him a list of verses. He didn't really give an adequate answer. He just said, well, how do you expect me to? I, I was not in the mind of those writers. I, I'm not going to, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so the question then you need to ask then is then, were they not guided by the Holy Spirit or were they not inspired by you know these writers? Because yeah. obviously, yeah. If, you, if you find verses in the KJV, you don't find them verses in the RSV. That just shows to me that that's not, that that's not a translation. That's yeah. a different version. Yeah, absolutely. And see, we didn't even get into the. If I was equipped, I was prepared to go into the contradictions and so forth. I did touch on the interpolations. I did want. I made sure I wanted to touch on that uh, a little bit during the discussion. But uh, uh, I was well prepared to go into the contradictions, but in the text itself, which even demonstrates even more reliability. But to me, the foundation of the problem is once again these various versions, even if it's just the two. Remember, I, I narrowed it down in the debate and just said, okay, let's just talk about two, the two, the two the two biggest and well-known versions, the Catholic and the Protestant. And we have, that's a major problem within itself. And that's not including the others, you know. Um, so uh, you know, uh, I, gather from, I gather from yesterday's debate, uh, one result only that uh, Brother George was trying to plea for God's sake, do not do that to me. We just only are believing that this happened and this happened and this happened. Yeah. He could not justify. Every time we talk about the reliability of the books, he will go into emotions and he will start preaching and preaching and preaching. Yeah. He was just trying to justify that he is a good speaker. I understand he's a great speaker. Yeah, yeah. But Pre preacher. being a great speaker does not mean that your message is true. That's Unfortunately, right. he can go in the church. No. Yes, can I, can brother. I just say uh, about uh, 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 no, if you want to finish, I just wanted to tell Brother Kenny. I, I, I want to just give one example, Brother Kenny, if it's okay with you, regarding a corruption in yeah, the sure, Bible. Just one example. Okay. So I start off by what Allah says in the Quran: "You al kalima amma wadihi." They alter the words from the right places, or they distort the words from the right places, or they change the word from the right places. The harf, the word, the letters. They change it. Okay. I'll give you one example, brothers, and keep this in mind. This is really interesting. And um, Brother Faisal knows about this, and I think Brother Ijaz does as well. Or definitely Ijaz do, but Brother Faisal does. Let me just bring this up. So Mashallah. I'm going to read um, from uh, the book of Judges, chapter 18, verse 30. Okay. And let me read. And it, uh, and, it, and it says in the KJV, Then the children of Dan set up for themselves a carved image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of captivity of the land. Fine, that's the KJV. This is what the NIV reads, guys. There, the uh, um, Danites set themselves the idol, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were the priests of the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity in the land. Now, you can see there's a change from the name Manasseh to Moses. KJV says Manasseh. NIV says Moses. Now, why, why is there a difference between the name? It's the same verse. Well, there's a change. I'll tell you what it is. If you read from context, the tribe of those people, they became uh, pagans, mushrik. So the, the original reading is the sons of Moses became mushrik. But when they understood that's problematic, Moses, his son, his grandson, no, no, no. So they changed it. So they literally, according to Rashi, if you read his commentary, in defense to Moses, the letter Nun was included, thus altering the name, scripturally suspending it. So they literally added the letter Nun, included letter Nun. So they added from Moshe to Manasseh. So do you see how they changed it? Just mm -hmm. because they don't want Moses, their leader, their um, the Musa, salam, their prophet, to have his grandson or grandchildren to become Kufr. So they were happy to alter the name just like that. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they, were, they, they knew there's a problem. This is from rabbinic tradition. So th if they can change names and words and letters just like that freely, what else could they change? 
Yeah. So exactly. when, when when George says that everything is the same, nothing's changed, and blah 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 blah, you don't have to even go that far. Yeah. The, the, their own your own rabbis are saying they've been changed, it's and you're like blaming the, the rabbis because like, they are the one who's supposed to have been entrusted. Allah says in the Quran, stuff is what they were entrusted with the Torah. The Paul says the Torah was entrusted to them, mm -hmm. so they have the Torah. You don't trust the Jews. No, you don't, because the Jews killed your God. You don't trust them. Yet they had the they had the authenticity, authentic. As, uh, well, they had the text. Allah says in Surah six ninety one, as you read yesterday, that they 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 uh, show little and conceal much. So they, 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 this is the habit that they had. Now we're not saying all Jews are bad. There are sincere Jews as well who are probably going through the original way of understanding it. But because they were already using a corrupted text, just the way Jesus in Luke was learning and he grew up, so he was learning the corrupted Torah anyway, according to the Bible. So Allah says in the Quran, we taught him the Injil and the Torah. Allah directly taught him, not the corrupted version, what Allah taught him. So do you, see, you can see all these changes are happening, or all what has happened, even now they happen. So, so for George's arguments are very bad, weak, baseless, and it carries no weight at all. Academically, it doesn't carry any weight. For a layman, it probably does, but academically, it's finished. Yeah. You know what I mean? Indeed. Brothers, do forgive me. I do have to leave. Brother Mustafa, do check your messages, inshallah. I do have to run, but uh, Brother Kenny, you did a fantastic job. I think uh, the Haq was demonstrated last night, and you did a fantastic job. I think the uh, reaction uh, of your opponent to the review, it was expected, obviously, but, you know, uh, we pray for him and his well-being. We ask that Allah guides him. Amin, And that we can come together as one community and learn and benefit from each other. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for well, having me. Brother, can you keep doing the good job that you're doing? And it's always a pleasure to be with you guys, well, brother Bati, well, brother so, Ramzi, and the others. Salam alaikum. Bye bye. Well, I'm salam. Be, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother Kenny. You've done a okay, great brother. job. Inshallah. More time with you. Assalamu alaikum. All right, brother. Well, alaikum salam, brother. Okay, so and I think we have Sister Katerina backstage. So let me bring on Sister Katerina. Kenny, okay, so, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Katerina. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. <laughs> oh, am I mute? Oh gosh! I don't know. No, are you good? good? You good? Oh, okay, okay, okay. How is everyone? Good evening. Yeah, I'm good. All I'm is well. All is Sorry, well. I was what a little bit. I was just a little bit late. It's all um, right. So, what did you think you about the debate yesterday? Well, um, I thought the debate went well. I thought uh, people were respectful, and that's always a plus. Um, what I noticed is that we is um, what Brother Kenny has mentioned already is just the circular logic. Um, as far as a debate, you know, yet yeah, that went that went well. That that went you know like a long procedure. Um, I think one of one of the things I noticed um, for the post debate questions, um, maybe in the future we should limit it to like one question or maybe like a double. question. You know, um, if a question has two parts or something like that, um, but maybe not like like 10 different points or something like that, because that's it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, it's a little yeah, bit overwhelming. We should, mm -hmm. we should put the stipulation that uh, usually usually we do. And I, I just uh, failed to do so yesterday for the parameters of the, the format. Uh, but li limit the the amount of time the questioner has to present the question. Mm -hmm. And also set parameters for the the response to the question, and also a rebuttal to the question. But yes. we didn't set those times, and so that that you know it was that was a little bit. Uh, uh, now, Kenny, can I? Uh, a little bit unfair. Go ahead, Brother Ramsey. Go ahead. Okay, so put it this way. Uh, this is what I wanted to ask. Okay, imagine someone walks up to your door. Hello, uh, blah blah blah. Believe in the gospel of Christ. Blah blah blah. This is the book you should read. Okay, why should I read that book? Because this book says da 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 da. da. No, that's not what I asked. Why do you believe? Why should I believe in the book? Because the book says that. It's like, okay, no, I'm asking why I should believe in that book. Like that book says stuff, right? Why should yeah. I believe in it? Oh, because it says that. Because it's consistent. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Like, well, slam the door. Honestly, yeah, that's, that's the point. Absolutely. We're not talking about the, the right. stories within the book. We're talking right. about where did this book come from? Who wrote the book? And if there's been changes to it, why is there changes to it? And if you're calling it the word of God, then how can you alter and change the word of God 
So that, therefore, in the in the debate, one of the points that I said that I was going to bring up is the difference between the word of God and the word of men. We know that these books uh, are written by mostly anonymous authors. And Correct. some of the books that, that are have names attributed to them, they're not authentic. You, they're not can't be verified that these people actually wrote these books. And so therefore, that's where the crux of the matter. It's not the it's not the content of the book. No. It's where did this book come from? Who's the author? And like the content is a whole different story. You were you didn't even get into contradictions and this and that. But yeah. forget the the content, just the the, right. the principle. Like if yeah. you if you look up circular argument, you'll see George's face right next to it. Look. Well, he didn't. He didn't show his face, but I mean, his profile picture. I don't know, but you get my point. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Another. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Another thing that I noticed um, is, um, are we are we talking about specifically like debate, or are we just giving feedback about like the content of the debate as well right now, or what's what's the parameter we're we're talking about right now? Both. I guess. Yeah. In charge. yeah, both. Okay. So what I noticed a lot of is, um, is, is brother Kenny was saying exactly what he just said. Okay. We have problems trusting the book because it's been changed here. It's been fabricated here. It's been interpolated here and so on and so on and so on. And he mentioned like maybe 25, you know, consecutive reasons, not, not attacking, but just these are the reasons that we have problems with trusting the entirety of the Bible, um, you know, as a reliable source of information. If a history, and the same thing as a history book, if it's been interpolated, changed, pages torn out, you know, all of that stuff, we would have a few problems, right? Because we would say, gosh, is this history accurate? So, um, and the responses were just kind of simply more, well, Deuteronomy says this and King says this, and it was just Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. And we, we know what the Bible verses are, right? We're just, we're talking about the integrity of the book as a reliable source of information. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think the opponent was, was I don't think that was really clicking, or maybe it was intentionally avoiding that part of it. And I did hear him say, "Well, the in, this, the 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 integral message is the same." Well, you know, it possibly is the same. However, we need to know, you know, the truth. <laughs> you know, if the, these are the words of God. And they have actually been changed by man. And there was seemed to be no problem with that. So yeah. this is where we're we were going it. as Muslims. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Go let me ahead. ask you, Abdul Mateen and uh, MZ, did, you, did uh, either of you see the debate yesterday? And maybe you'd like to give your, uh, give some feedback on it. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I didn't watch all of it, to be honest. Well, I'm, I'm just but participating so. okay i'm still learning i'm trying to learn so okay yeah. brother I MZ, did you, yeah I just know, quick seconds you know uh, MZ, did sorry. you watch the i'm, oh, I'm just brother. leaving I'll, I'll be back inshallah if we are alive okay I brother i remember I'm the, miss you. okay it, i remember the, you had a first debate with him yeah this is like yeah. a off topic but i mean the picture there and he's got like a little jesus there and a big earth so you're telling me this man created this big earth. He's yeah. smaller than the he's smaller than the picture. You just it's a joke. Well, you know? that's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> Absolutely. Of it's course, just, then the Christians are gonna say that oh, well, that's the human that's the human just, uh, Jesus, but okay, all right, whatever, man. You know, it's it, the thing is these 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 sons of God and God men and trinities, these mm -hmm. have existed in pagan paganism long before Jesus, peace be upon him, came to the earth. And we know this is Isa, Ibn Maryam. Uh, may Allah be pleased with them both. And and so, um, yeah, I mean, obviously a human being is not God. A God you know, and our, our God, our creator is not a human being. Um, and so it's just, it's, you know, that's, and that, that's, 
you know, okay, so you want to say that the well, yeah, so regard regarding the topic of the debate, uh, he uh, he just didn't build a case. And you remember when I, remember when I said I always say if you repeat your belief over and over and over and over again, it becomes true. That's yeah, right. you can convince yourself of it. Brother oh, Abu Omar. Welcome, Abu Omar. Nice to see you. Alhamdulillah. As- alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? We missed you. I'm more. Let me go back to Brother MZ just quickly, and I want to see if he if he watched the debate yesterday. Uh, did you see it, Brother? Yes, I, I did watch part of it. And I okay. think um, I echo all of uh, what you guys are saying, just like the reasoning, um, the question again was the reliability of scripture and stating verses, uh, you know, again and again from the Old or the New Testament doesn't really build a case. Uh, okay. And I know like you didn't go in a whole lot into the contradictions, uh, but we were talking about how the word has been changed, for example, in the Old Testament. But even in the New Testament, if you just compare like, you know, what Jesus is saying in Mark and Matthew, Right. And that just makes a huge difference. Like, you know, one one example is that of the rich ruler. Um, when when rich ruler comes uh, and asks Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? That's the Mark version. Right. And then Jesus replies, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God alone. Yeah. But Matthew r- reporting the same thing changes the question. And what Jesus replies is also changed. So Matthew in the in the same story in Matthew is teacher, what good must I do? to have eternal life. And then Jesus replies, why are you asking me about, about what is good? Yeah. Right. So it's the same story. And you can clearly see the implications because, you know, if you ask any Unitarian, they'll, the first, one of the main verses, you know, John 7, 3, 17, 3, et cetera. But they'll also bring up this. Jesus himself is saying, no one is good, but God alone. Mm-hmm. But then you can see the later gospel, Matthew writer is actually changing the same to make a point that, you know, it's embarrassing if you believe in, in any shape or form that Jesus is deity, the, the Mark version is embarrassing for them, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying like just this simple comparison Pro- of what Jesus is saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. From from Mark to Matthew to John uh, to Luke to John, I think that's yeah. also kind of like very interesting well, to just see the evolution. Yeah, and see what so what they do. I, I sometimes maybe it's a little bit disrespectful for me to say this, but I use the the analogy of macaroni and cheese. Okay, I know that. <laughs> I don't mean to be disrespectful, but but this is what comes to my mind is that in that when you take all these these narratives and you mash them together like macaroni and cheese, well, it, yeah. it becomes palatable in in your mind. But if you if you set these aside like this brother has done, and you look at these verses uh, side by side, you know these these same stories side by side, there's multiple problems. And the church is so happy. So how can it be reliable? How can those stories in these unreliable books be reliable? They're not. They're simply not uh, because yeah, they're, so different. Jesus, they're different. And then you, so you either have to decide, okay, which, you know, are we supposed to believe that? The, which one? Which one do we go with? Well, they they mash it together in their minds and and uh, and just you know just go with that. So it's a uh, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, one moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Brother Abu Abu Omar, did you see the the debate yesterday or at any point? Uh, First of all, salam alaikum. I'm so sorry. I was very busy this period and uh, possibly I'll I'll, I'll, I'll stay busy for a lot of time. So I I apologize. I could not follow a lot with you guys. I I wanted, but I, I couldn't. If I if I may, because I have to run. Also, I have a couple of things. It's only three o'clock in the morning, three three thirty in the morning today. Oh, yeah. Will be a Friday prayer, you know, brother yeah. Kenny. Uh, very important day. Uh, first of all, please, uh, I missed uh, brother Muhammad and brother Ijaz. That's my bad. Uh, number two, uh, if I may, I want to be in the favor of the Christians, if you allow me. Sure. Uh, uh, I. Let's say 50% of the issue is not on the on the shoulders of the regular Christians. Regular Christians have been, I mean, the, it's a 2,000 year old religion. 2,000 year old have been fed with this uh, uh, ideology. Right. Uh, and their schoolers, th- those are the person that they take the a huge amount of the responsibility. They never, tell them anything 
about the truth. I mean, like uh, they, they won't tell them that, uh, well, the, the Bible have been manipulated, have been corrupted. They will never, they will never express anything. So for the regular Christians, he believes that the Bible is truly a, a sacred book. Uh, the writer, or the writers of the Bible, the, the are actually the disciples of Jesus. When they say uh, eyewitnesses, it's they imagine that they are aware truly eyewitnesses, known eyewitnesses to what happened, and they have uh, conveyed the message and so on. So the, all these lies they have been fed uh, systematically, and uh, the media also plays a role in keeping them away from Islam because in the media, Islam is uh, is from the devil. Uh, I think uh, also, Brother Kenny, one of the preachers in, in the United States, I forgot his name. He was literally saying, do not read the Quran. It's from the devil. Do not read the Quran. He was oh, just sure. listening, not read the Quran. Probably Jimmy Swaggart. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's, he's that guy. He's Fox it, News, Fox News. Yeah. So if, if, if there is something, if you want to prove something wrong, you, you will tell people, no, read it and know it by yourself that it's wrong. But when you say, when you tell people, do not read it, why, what, what you're afraid of? I mean, what's the fear of reading the Quran? Yeah. So uh, the Christian, the regular Christian, they take uh, only 50% of the, of, the, of the guilt on their shoulders. The 100% goes to their schoolers who, yeah. who uh, either hide the truth or like the other guy from Africa, remember Brother Kenny and Brother, Brother Ramsey, the guy who was insisting that it's not Ahad, it's Ahad. I mean, yeah. we are Arabs and he, he doesn't speak Arabic and he wants to teach us our own language and our own uh, book. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is in the favor of the Christians. I don't take all the blame of the regular Christians, but uh, I think they, they, they carry half of it. Yeah. The schools are the ones who are responsible. Yeah. The, the point, I'm so sorry because I have to run, Brother Kini. Okay. You are a, an Islamophobe if you do not iqra. You do <laughs> that's right. Read. That's, that's, that's a very good one. <laughs> and that's, that's a good one. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Forgive me. Alaykum, Habibi. Mashallah. Salaamu alaikum. Salaamu alaikum. That's a good one right there. I didn't expect that. You're going to write that. Someone write that down. Bam, there it is. The, the, one of Ooh. the new books that are, is on the way, inshallah. Uh, and uh, I'm still writing this book right now, and it will be the follow-up to the book Consider Islam Disproving the Patriots of Propaganda, which is available on Amazon and also on my website, KennyBomber.com. But this is what I'm writing two books right now. You might be an Islamophobe if, and also the book uh, Everything is a Test, Truth is Made Clear from Falsehood. And so those books will be out in uh, 2021 at some point, inshallah. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that he... He made that point. That's a good one. I didn't expect him to, to pull that out. Let me bring on. Uh, oh, there's somebody that uh, left. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, uh, all right. Someone come on. Okay. All right. So, Alhamdulillah. So, if you haven't seen the debate from yesterday, what I'll do is I will post the link in the chat. The link that I'm about to post right now is the link from the debate yesterday. So go ahead and watch it. Leave your comments in the uh, in the, the comment section on YouTube and tell, tell us what you think about the debate, how it went, and so forth. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share on that. And um, oh, so Ahmad Salim. Assalamu alaikum, brother. We got the dragon. Yep, yep, it's me, the dragon. How you guys doing? Alhamdulillah. Brother, did you see the debate yesterday? I was. Uh, it, uh, this is a pleasure. This pleasure that I did not see the debate yesterday oh, okay. due okay. to time constraints in college and stuff. Yeah, and I just started college as well. Also, I wanted to point out, brother, uh, the title of the uh, the live stream. There is an error. It's written post debate, not post debate. You forgot. You missed the T in the title. Did I really? Okay. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you for that. No problem. Right. All right. All and uh, I'll, I'll let the others speak. And yeah, that's fine. Post debate, post. Ah, uh, yeah, did I mean, you're right. Alhamdulillah, I just sure did. Someone's gonna it. comment. Kenny doesn't know how to spell. How can he possibly critique the Bible? <laughs> there are um, plenty. Yeah, there are people who are like that. But yeah. 
what did you think about the debate, um, Brother Ahmed? Do you have any like um, suggestions, any Thing we could do done differently anything like that the only suggestion that even though like i said even though it was a big displeasure that i never saw the debate due to time uh the only suggestion would be to do it on discord that's all do it on that's what there was yeah I'm getting lit, brother brother mz salam alaikum um we, we i don't recognize well, okay. time. <laughs> salam alaikum did you um what did you think about the content of the debate? Let's talk about the content. Yeah, so I only wa watched part of it, but I already commented earlier on um, before that. But um, I think overall, again, like I've watched a lot of Brother Kenny's stuff and I'm like, it's always, it's always refreshing um, to hear perspective. I think what I really appreciate is just the, um, you know, cordial attitude and just very humbleness. Um, you know, we can disagree all we want, but we should not, uh, you know, never forget that, you know, we are talking to human beings who are all, you know, God's creation. So I think I really, really appreciate that. Well said, well said, well said. Brother. Yeah. Perfect. Well said. Yeah. Ramzi, yes. what, did you think, what did you think about the content of the debate? I was a uh, little late content. for the part of it. Content? Um, a part of me wants to say what content exactly, but um, the uh, I'm just kidding. No, uh, I, I just the circular. I mean, if you go if you go to the the chat of the of that video, you'll see um, the the live chat. You'll see I kept on saying circular reasoning. Why do you? He he just kept on quoting the Bible, quoting the Bible over and over. Quoting the Bible doesn't prove why you believe the Bible. Correct. Re Correct. Repeating your belief. Repeating your belief it does not Correct. verify your belief. Right. And that means two things. That means either he, that's all he had, you know, to let, let me interrupt on. just just quickly. Okay, this is the banner. Uh, is this the banner he was talking about? Had a misspelling. Where's the misspelling? Post debate discussion. That looks fine. I don't see a misspelling. Unless my spelling is wrong. Right. Okay. So I don't have my degree yet, but I think I think that's spelled correct. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't. I, I was I was fixing to go to change it. Uh -huh. This is the same banner that's been up the whole time, and there's no misspelling here. Right, I don't see a uh misspelling -huh. there. Maybe he was talking about something else, maybe or possibly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he said the the banner for the debates. So I, I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's talking about. Let me check something. Maybe out. the advertisement. Maybe possibly. Uh, it was. I see what it was. Okay. okay. So yeah. on the on the on the main on the main. Oh, okay. Uh, on the can, uh, on the title for the show. But can you can I can I also make one other thing? Go ahead, brother. So essentially, it was I would say about eighty five to ninety percent circular arguments, and then again I mean this with respect. And then the other fifteen percent was, and this was all in preaching mode, by the way. This was all preaching mode. And then the other fifteen percent was essentially like. Slightly like bringing some extra evidence here and there, but but that evidence was actually it's almost as if like are you like when you say that are you not thinking of what we're gonna ask next? Mm -hmm. Like when you when you say when you're making that argument, for example, he just for example he said, oh the Dead Sea Scrolls, which date to about three hundred B three hundred to one hundred BC, they uh they have the Old Testament. Next question is okay, when do those date to? Oh, one thousand years after Moses. Okay, so why do you believe that? It's like, are you not thinking, uh, what's the next question, the next obvious question going to be? He also mentioned, for example, Tacitus. Isn't the oldest manuscript of Tacitus from the 8th or 9th century post-Islam? Yeah. I'm just like, do these things not come to mind? They seem pretty obvious to me, and I don't know. I just... Yeah. But he, I don't think he didn't build a very good case. He was appealing to emotion and. And that was just a small part of the. Those were like the few tiny points he pointed out here and there. Majority of the time, he was just quoting the Bible. Yeah. Okay, so he was talking about the misspelling on the on the title for the show for the YouTube and for the main link. So yeah, he was correct. I missed the T on there. So alhamdulillah, that was just a typo. Okay, so listen, uh, I think that we're going to call it a show. We've been on for about a minute, fifteen, uh, an hour and fifteen minutes rather, and um, we just wanted to come on and have a brief discussion about the debate and i think we've pretty much said all that we can say at this point um so if you'd like to support the show you can do so by clicking on either the 
GoFundMe link or the PayPal link in the chat. That is the Dawa Fund. And I encourage you to do so, inshallah. And also, I want you to check out, go make sure you check out one of the sister channels that we're streaming live through right now, IRC, IRCR Media. And make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share there. Not subscribe, like, and share, but yeah, go like all his videos. But also make sure you subscribe there and, and uh, hit the bell and so forth. That way you get notifications. And um, and so Enjoy. we'll leave it at that. Okay, Sister Katerina, you have something to say? You're on mute. There you go. I always do that. I always do that. Sorry. Before we close, I want to uh, remind everyone, maybe who did not uh, see it yesterday, but the um, the offer is still on. Um, I donated a hundred dollars to our Dawa fund to be. You can, and you can allocate it to whichever of the projects you would like. Um, hygiene for the homeless, water wells, or um, the Quran initiative. Or you can donate to us as dais. Not money for us, but so that we can keep going with the show. Um, the offer from me is that if anybody can match my uh, $100 donation, you can do it in partners, in threes, in fours. It doesn't matter how many. I will pay, I will purchase your, um, your patronage package for the show, which is like a monthly deduction of $15, but I will purchase it and it will come from my pocket. Um, so awesome. you will become a patron um, on me if you can match my $100 donation. And that offer is a permanent offer that stands. May Allah bless you, Mr. Yeah, may Allah bless you for your efforts and your intentions. Amazing. And may Allah have mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his final servant in the seal of all prophets. Make sure you tune in to the next episode, inshallah. I will uh, make, uh, I'll make I'll post the ad for that soon. And um, alhamdulillah, make sure you pray for the people that are homeless and sleeping in the street and people that are going through different Absolutely. tests and trials. I mean, pray that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes ease for all those people. I mean, and once again, may Allah accept our efforts and our intentions and everything that we're doing. And so we'll leave it at that. And um, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salamu alaykum. 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 As-